All right. Again, thanks everyone for joining us this afternoon. We are here to talk about A Community Thrives, exciting campaign that is officially launching. Uh, today, we're really going to focus primarily on the uh, aspects of getting started with this year's campaign. My, my name is Bethany. I am the Director of Community Engagement here at Mighty Cause, the platform uh, partner for this campaign. And we're also joined today by Sue Madden, the Director of the Gannett Foundation. We'll be hearing from her in just a few minutes uh, to kick us off, give us a little bit of information about the uh, Community Thrives uh, campaign in general. So just a brief agenda for us uh, to give us a feel for what we'll cover uh, during today's training. We're gonna start with some of the basics of the challenge, understanding what the challenge is all about. And then we're gonna jump into and really spend the majority of our time focusing on how you get started on the platform. From submitting your application, to building your page, to accessing your donations report, all the key information that you'll need to know about using the platform to participate in the fundraising challenge. We will close out with some exciting information about the grants and the bonuses that are available as a part of this challenge, cover some key items that you need to know, and then end, uh, as I mentioned, with a Q&A session. So if you do have questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to type it into that GoToWebinar control panel on the side of your screen. And with that, I am going to turn it over to Sue from the Gannett Foundation, who is just going to give us a little bit of an overview about what the Community Thrives campaign is really all about. Okay, well, uh, welcome everyone. I'm so glad to share the program with you and happy that you've been able to join us this afternoon. Um, and so what is a Community Thrive? So first I just thought I'd quickly mention that um, the Gannett Foundation is the philanthropic arm of Gannett Inc. Uh, which is the parent company that owns USA Today and about 260 daily uh, publications across the country, um, in addition to um, a couple hundred other uh, weekly and um, periodical publications. Um, so today we are here to talk about the program that was launched three years ago, Community Thrives, as a way for the company to link um, its purpose with um, some implementation and sort of walk the talk of being a partner in the community and enabling our communities to connect, act, and to thrive. Um, the program also was started to enable uh, small organizations and large organizations alike to compete um, uh, for grants uh, from the foundation. And also, um, two years ago, we launched the fundraising, the crowdsourcing piece of the initiative, uh, which has enabled us to leverage uh, further our investment in the program um, and through which we've raised, um, or the organizations, excuse me, have raised about $4 million contributing to the impact of the program. Um, and the net net of the program is to enable you all to bring ideas that are very organic and um, and uh, reflective of uh, your particular community needs um, and raise them up and leverage our platform across the country to give both visibility and to bring resources to you. So, um, the uh, fundraising campaign will be starting on the 21st of September. We are right now in the application phase, which um, was launched on August 18th and will be completed on the 11th of September. Um, so I don't know whether all of you have already submitted your applications or whether you're in process, um, but we obviously we would like you to uh, or need you to finish your application by the 11th if you have not completed it yet. And then we will um, be being in touch with you and give you lots of um, additional tools on how to set up your particular campaign page, um, which will be the tool in which you use to fundraise. Um, the initiative uh, requires that the organizations participate in the fundraising crowdfunding campaigns and raise a minimum. Uh, generally, what we do is we take the pool of applicants and take the um, uh, their general look at the general operating budgets of those organizations and divide them sort of into two groups a smaller budget organizations and larger budget organizations and the the grants are organized in that fashion 
Um, and we'll get into that a little bit more in a little bit more detail. Um, so we have several different pools of funds that the top fundraiser grants um, for each uh, smaller organizations and large organizations so that you're not necessarily directly competing with um, with large organizations if you're a small entity. And then um, included in that will be weekly challenges to incentivize your, you and your organization to um, and your donors to give throughout the campaign and not just at the very end. Um, all organizations will keep um, all funds that you raise um, online and um, this year we are partnering with Mighty Cause for this particular piece of the program and um, they've been a fantastic partner and we're really excited um, what the future will hold for us together. Um, so there, this year, um, this number is actually, um, well, there's $2.1 million in grants available outside of the fundraising grants, and um, the fundraising grants total $200,000. There's two uh, general pools. One is the top fundraising, um, the three top fundraisers in each of the two tiers, and then um, after they raise the minimums that are um, identified there that I mentioned earlier, and the um, um, weekly bonus grants. <clears throat> so those two pieces together total $200,000 for the fundraising um, piece of this. And the grants will be announced in early December. You will be able to, um, and Bethany will get into this a little bit, you'll be able to see on the leaderboard how your organization is doing um, compared with other organizations. So we'll have a sense each week who has won the um, bonus challenge grants and, and then obviously at the end of the fundraising period, the top fund, fundraiser uh, grants. Great. Thank you, Sue. That was very helpful to get some insight from you. Uh, Sue will be here for the rest of the uh, presentation so that we may hear from her uh, from time to time, and she will be here with questions at the end. So if you do have more questions for her and the Gannett Foundation. Um, but for now, I'm going to uh, take it back over and uh, really get into the remainder of what we wanted to cover today. Um, I wanted to start with just a little bit of information about Mighty Cause. Uh, as Sue mentioned, we're the new platform partner for this year's campaign. So for those of you that are not familiar with Mighty Cause, uh, we're a year-round fundraising platform. We have a full software as a service suite for nonprofits, everything from peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tools, CRM, donation forms, all kinds of great stuff for nonprofit partners. And uh, one of the biggest pieces of our our business is these uh, giving event campaigns that we've been hosting since uh, 2007 in partnership with uh, all different kinds of organizations uh, like, <clears throat> like the Gannett Foundation, as well as nonprofits, corporate partners, et cetera. Um, and <clears throat> excuse me, as you go throughout the challenge, we will be the go-to contact for any technical support questions that you have, um, we'll cover at the end all the different ways that you can reach out to our team for customer support. Um, and we'll also be the team uh, guiding you through with tips and tricks throughout. So uh, be on the lookout for emails from the Mighty Cause team as well. Uh, we'll be here to kind of guide you through the process. So we're gonna start just with a little bit of information about how a fundraising challenge like this works. For those of you that might be new to this concept. Um, so really the goal is to, uh, to bring people together to raise money, uh, really in its, its core element. Um, so you work collectively, goal is of course to raise, raise funds and awareness for your mission and your work, but by being a part of a platform like this, you get to be exposed to this larger network, come together with other organizations that are um, also doing great things in their communities. And as Sue mentioned, uh, one of the fun pieces of this is the ability to compete to earn these fundraising grants. Uh, we'll talk more in detail about what those fundraising grants are and how you can win those later in the um, presentation. Um, but you'll also have the ability to become eligible for merit-based grants as well. You can engage sponsors, community partners, peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. Really, it's about bringing people together to raise money for your cause and all kinds of great causes across the country. And so we'll go through a lot of this today, but 
when you boil it down to the most important things that you need to do to participate and be successful, the very first step is to apply. So as Sue mentioned, the application process is open right now. It's open through September 11th. So if you haven't started the application, go ahead and do that as soon as possible. If you've started it, but you've not finished it yet, make sure that you don't forget to go back in and finish that process. After you submit your application, applications will be reviewed and uh, you will get a response, uh, hopefully your approval and your response uh, within uh, two to three business days from when you submit your application. So uh, definitely no reason to delay. If you know you wanna participate, go ahead and get that application started today. Once you are approved to participate, you'll update your Mighty Cause profile page. You'll start planning your fundraising campaign. What will you be doing to promote on social media, email, et cetera? Um, might you invite any of your supporters to create peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers on behalf of your organization? All those pieces that go into making a fundraising campaign successful. And then we jump in uh, once the campaign actually launches to raising money. <clears throat> so now <clears throat> that we have a brief overview, a big picture about what you need to do to participate, we'll dive into some of the specifics. So once you log on to the platform, you'll see that you have access to a dashboard for your nonprofit's account on the platform. So a quick overview of what you'll find on that dashboard. At the top, you'll see an overview screen. This is where you can access a to-do list, which helps you with some of the key items to complete on your profile page, any announcements and key metrics of your organization. Uh, next, you'll have a fundraising tab. This is where you can access and edit your profile page. Uh, that will be the page that you use to participate in this campaign. If you do have any peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers start for your organization, you can view and manage those in that section. Uh, you also have the ability to add batching grants to your campaign, customize your checkout flow, lots of exciting additional tools there. Your report section, that's going to give you all the data that you need uh, from your donations report to uh, disbursement report. Um, to help reconcile any funds that you do receive from the campaign. Talk more about all of this later, but just a, a quick overview of what you'll find where. Um, and the last item is the settings. This is where you can update and review your organization's information, legal address, set up uh, your bank account for electronic funds transfer, uh, add and remove uh, administrators that have access to your page. So. Again, just a quick highlight of what you can do where. And now I'll actually jump into really the most important things that you'll want to do in each of those sections. So customizing the profile is really one of the most important things that you'll do for this campaign. This profile page is the main page that you will share with supporters. So you have the option to customize the look and feel on the platform, and you'll want to do that so that you can really tell a story to the donors and the visitors to the page about why they should make their donation. Why should they give to your organization? Why should they give to your organization during this challenge? And of course, this will be just one of the tools that you use to communicate with donors. You'll be posting on social media, you'll be sending emails, but whatever that key messaging that you define for the campaign, you'll have the opportunity to add that to your profile so that donors are seeing a consistent message from you wherever they're hearing about your participation in the campaign. So the very first thing that you'll be able to do on this profile page is to edit your theme. This will be right up at the top of the page. So you'll first want to upload your logo. It's gonna be a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. So this is gonna be the same size that you would have uploaded on Facebook, Twitter, et cetera. So most organizations should have a one-to-one -one aspect ratio logo ready to go. You can uh, click on the little pencil icon. Um, that'll be your cue throughout the platform that you have something that you can edit. So clicking on the pencil icon will allow you to upload that logo. You'll also have the ability to upload a banner image that's that background image that you see behind the logo there. Uh, we do have a gallery available. So if you don't have a great image or you're working on getting a great image, you can always borrow one from our gallery in the meantime. That's really meant to be a background image, more just context setting for donors, visitors when they get to your page, something that reminds them of the work 
that your organization does for the community. You also have the ability to add a filter over top of that background image. So if you have one, but it's a little too bright or the opposite, you can add a filter and play around with the strength of that filter. And all of that you can do uh, live on page editing. So you have the ability to play around with the tools and see, see how it's looking as you're building it so that you have a really easy time designing a good looking page without having to be a graphic designer. Um, and the final theme editing option that you have is the ability to set a theme color for your page. So you can select one of the uh, colors from your logo, perhaps enter the hex code, select it, and then throughout your page on your donate button, other places throughout this profile page, that theme color will be carried through. So next, kind of moving down the page, if you will, you'll have the ability to add a goal to your page and choose what metrics you'd like to display. So you have the option of displaying the dollars that you've raised during the campaign, as well as the number of unique donors that have given to your campaign. You can display both or neither on your uh, page. It's up to you. You also have the ability to add a fundraising goal uh, and a progress bar. So if your organization is hoping to raise $10,000 in this campaign, for example, you can add that progress bar to your page. And as donations are being made throughout the challenge, that progress bar will be updated, alerting both you and donors and visitors to the page of your progress towards your campaign goal. Um, and finally, you do have some flexibility in those metrics, uh, when you'd like your metrics to start counting from. So for example, if you've used Mighty Cause in the past, you've participated in another uh, challenge or event, you might have uh, metrics already showing at the top of your page, but you'll want to set the start date for these metrics to be September 21st at 12 p.m. Eastern when this challenge starts. Now, um, all the leaderboards, challenge totals, and everything like that will all be calculated from this start date, no matter what you select here. Um, but this is really just your opportunity to make sure that your own profile page is accurately showing only the totals that you're raising as part of the challenge. Uh, next, moving down the page, is really your option to tell your story. It's kind of the meat of the page. You have an inline editor so that you have the ability to tell a dynamic story. It's not just a block of text. You can add formatting. You can add headers, lists, bullet points, um, bold, italic. You can add hyperlinks. You can add images, videos. Um, so we really encourage you to build a nice looking story here. It's always hard to uh, capture and keep donors' attentions for very long. So using some formatting tools can really help to make sure that your key message really jumps off the page at the donor. So that is some of the key items on the front donor facing uh, page that donors will see. Um, and now we're gonna come go through some of the uh, administrative tools that you all have access to on the back end to customize the experience and uh, access all of your data. So the first is the checkout flow. So on the Mighty Cause platform, the checkout flow uh, has been built and is constantly monitored for conversion optimization across all devices, of course, uh, to make sure that we've really designed a simple, intuitive checkout flow. So things like a browser autofill, for example, are all already designed and built into the checkout flow. But within that, we have some additional tools that allow you to customize that experience. So first, you have the ability to choose what donor data you'd like to collect beyond name and email, which will always be collected from donors. For example, you can choose whether or not you need to collect the physical mailing address from donors, phone number, company name, et cetera. So you have the ability to decide, do you want to streamline the process for donors or are some of these additional pieces of information important to you and your stewardship process? You also have the ability to add four custom donation suggestions to your page. So when somebody comes to your organization's page and clicks to donate, they will see four suggested donation levels, for example, $50 buys food for a family of four, $100 buys food for 
a family of four for three weeks, whatever it might be. Of course, every organization is going to have a little bit of a different spin on this, but it's a nice way to really tie a donation amount to something more tangible for the donors, reinforce the impact that they will have with their donation, and also continue to tell that story that you've started in your email campaign, on your profile page, about what uh, your organization really does for the community. Um, and finally, you'll have the option to preview the donation experience. So I always recommend before a challenge like this starts, preview the experience here in your checkout flow uh, tools so that you know exactly what it's going to look like for donors when they come to your page and make their donation. You also have the ability to customize the experience after they press submit and complete their donation. So um, you'll have two key options. The first is a thank you page that donors will see on screen right after they complete their gift with prompts to share on social media. Um, but then you have the ability to add additional information there if you want to um, add a thank you video or just um, a personal note from your executive director, for example. You have flexibility, also an inline editor there to share your thank you messaging. And beside from the uh, thank you page that's on the screen, you also have the ability to add custom text to the automated thank you receipt that is sent to donors on completion of their donation. So the tax receipt is handled by the platform that will be sent automatically. You can add customized text that gets added into that so that as soon as they complete their donation, what they see on the screen, the email they receive, all tie back to your organization and your campaign for a community thrives. So just like I encourage organizations to preview the donation experience, I also encourage you to preview the post donation experience so you can send yourself a sample receipt, preview that thank you page so that you know exactly what donors will see during the process. So one of the uh, really great tools that organizations have access to to build out your fundraising campaign, make it exciting, is the ability to add matching grant to your page. So part of the reason that a campaign like a community thrives is so exciting is, is the extra urgency and opportunity that comes with all of those fundraising grants uh, that, that are being given away. So this is, is really an opportunity for you at your own organization's level to kind of build in additional incentives. So if you have a, um, a local corporate partner, uh, local business, maybe your board of directors uh, wants to come together and provide a match for uh, your organization's participation in the challenge, you have the ability to add that matching grant to your campaign. Now, the match doesn't have to be paid online through the platform. It certainly can if that's the preference. If it's not paid through the platform, let's say you get a $5,000 matching grant uh, and the donor wants to just send you a check after the campaign is over, that's still great and you have the opportunity to leverage that for support during the challenge. But of course, that $5,000 match won't count as part of the challenge. If your donor does decide they want to make their gift through the platform, then their matching gift will be a part of your challenge totals. So just something to keep in mind there. Um, there's lots of flexibility in terms of how you add this match to your um, page. You can do a dollar for dollar match. You can do a one to one match. You can do a double match. You can do a triple match. You can have a match that's only available if you get a certain number of donations made to your campaign. So depending on your goals and the goals of your matching donor, you have some flexibility in terms of how you present it. And then adding a match, you'll add an additional display on your profile page that shows donors counting down during the challenge how much time is left for your matching grant and how many dollars are left in the match that you have available. So it's a nice way to just add additional urgency and excitement to your own campaign. I mentioned previously that uh, you'll have a reports tab on your dashboard and that's really where you're gonna access all of your donation data during the campaign. So uh, first thing is that all administrators for your organization will receive an email notification when a donation is made throughout the challenge. So for anyone that does have access 
you'll get access to your page by filling out that application form. Um, but anyone that has access will receive email notifications by default. If, um, if you don't want to receive these notifications, if, for example, you're getting way too much, uh, way too many donations and it's um, overwhelming your inbox, that's a great problem to have. You're welcome to come into your profile settings and turn off those donation notifications. And at any time during the campaign, you can log in and access your donor data in real time. So you'll see all the most up-to-date donations in your donations report. On screen, you'll see a overview with some of the key details, the donor name, amount, uh, email address, et cetera. And then you can download a full CSV to get all the detail about their gift. For example, if you asked for billing address or phone number, et cetera, all that will be available in the CSV report that you can download. You'll also have the ability to add offline donations to your page total. So um, let's say you do receive a check donation or cash donation and you want to reflect that in the totals on your page you're welcome to do that and there is uh, the ability to add an offline donation through these reports as well um, as i mentioned similar with a matching grant that's not paid through the platform those won't count for challenges or your fundraising minimum uh, but it is a nice way to make sure the total on your own page is representative if you do have additional funds coming in from other sources um, and the final thing to note here is that donations can be made on your page before and after the challenge. You do have access to this profile page to use it when you'd like, but only donations that are made in the challenge window will reinforce the challenge window dates for you a couple more times on today's webinar, um, but really only donations made in that challenge window will count as a part of the challenge. Of course, any donations that you receive on your profile page at any time will always be dispersed to your organization. And um, to share a little bit more about how that disbursement process works, um, our preferred method is to disperse funds to nonprofits by a direct deposit on a twice a month schedule. So any donations that are made to your organization on the platform between the 1st and the 15th of the month will be sent via EFT on the 25th of that same month. Any donations made from the 16th of the month to the end will all be sent on the 10th of the following month. Um, so as I mentioned, that's our preferred uh, disbursement method and we encourage organizations to sign up for that. Uh, it's free and you'll get your funds uh, faster. And in uh, the current times when Maybe you're not at your office, uh, you're working remotely, whatever it might be. It just ensures that there's no delays in your organization receiving your funds because they're deposited directly into your account. If for some reason you can't sign up for EFT or you don't want to, um, we will batch any donations uh, for uh, the month of September, for example, and send them in a check around October 10th. So we will do disbursements once a month. If you don't elect to sign up for EFT, there is a $5 check fee associated with this, um, but you'll still receive all of your funds. We'll send that to the address that's on file with the IRS. And no matter how you're receiving disbursements, you will have access to detailed disbursement reports on the platform so that if you do receive a direct deposit of $5,648, for example, you can go into the disbursement report and see exactly what is made up of that amount, uh, any what donations were included, any fees, et cetera. So all that information uh, will be easily uh, reconcilable by your finance or accounting team using the disbursement report. So the final item down the dashboard is the settings page. And I mentioned it earlier, but this is really where you can kind of manage your organization's presence on the platform, uh, do things like adding and removing administrators. So administrators are um, anyone that can access your organization's profile page, your organization data. So if you have um, other people on your team that need access to the platform, the data, et cetera, you can go into your settings and invite anybody else on your team that needs to have access. You can have up to 10 administrators per organization. 
This is also where you can do things like updating your legal address or uh, the legal name of your organization. We import regularly from the IRS database, so we should have the most up-to-date file. But if you have recently changed any of that information, uh, you can submit documentation to get that information changed on the platform. Uh, this is also where you can sign up for that electronic funds transfer disbursement that we were just talking about. Quick and easy setup process there. You'll enter your uh, account number and your routing number. Uh, and many organizations are approved with just that information, though some may need to provide a uh, voided check or a letter from the bank to finalize. Um, and you also have the ability here to customize your social share experience and the end of the URL for your fundraising page. So we've covered a lot of the platform basics that I wanted to go through. And now we're gonna take some time to talk about some of the exciting grants and bonuses that will be available during the challenge. So the first is the top fundraiser grants. And these are going to be available through the, the entire length of the challenge. So right from the start, Monday, September 1st, all the way through the end, Friday, October 16th at noon. The challenge starts and ends at noon in the middle of the day. So you'll wanna go ahead and uh, set your calendars uh, right now for those really important times. And the top fundraiser grants, the competition for those will go throughout the length of the challenge. And the top three organizations that raise the most dollars during the challenge will win these prizes here. Uh, as Sue talked about earlier, there are two tiers of organizations, small and large, tier one, tier two. Um, and so there will be three winners picked, three recipients picked from both of those uh, tiers. So the first prize will be $25,000, second prize will be $15,000, and third prize will be $10,000. So um, there will be, as Sue mentioned, leaderboards live on the page during the length of the challenge. So you'll be able to see how you're doing in comparison to other organizations. So you can uh, keep an eye on uh, your progress and uh, use, use your project or your progress or your standing on the leaderboard to encourage your donors to continue uh, giving and supporting your organization. Uh, though uh, all winners will be reviewed after the challenge, just to be sure that all rules, uh, et cetera, are followed correctly. Um, one of the key things to keep in mind for the top fundraiser grants is that organizations must um, have a minimum of 10 unique donors to their campaign to be eligible. So aside from the overall top fundraiser grants throughout the length, uh, there'll also be uh, weekly bonus challenges uh, going on during the campaign to help keep it exciting throughout, uh, but also give more opportunities to earn prize grants. So the first bonus challenge will start right at the kickoff of the challenge and go through uh, Monday, September 28th at 11.59.59 a.m. And uh, in both of the participating tiers, uh, there will be two organizations that receive the most sole source donations um, through their page will receive a $5,000 prize grant. We'll talk a little bit more about sole source donation, what that means um, in a moment. And then the second bonus challenge, starting right when that first bonus challenge ends, Monday, uh, September 28th, and going through Monday, October 5th. Uh, in this bonus challenge, there will be eight total charities that uh, are recipients. Um, four in each tier, and this will be uh, organizations that that raise the most uh, donations on their page uh, will receive $3,000 each. Bonus challenge three, starting October 5th, ending October 12th. Again, this is going to be based on sole source donations, individual donors, um, there'll be six total charities, three in each tier uh, that receive $4,000 each. And then the final bonus challenge is going to start Monday, October 12th and end uh, Friday, October 16th. So this one is a little bit less than a full week, uh, but it'll go the last full business week of the challenge. Uh, again, eight charities, four in each tier that have the most, uh, that raise the most donations 
will receive $4,000. And all of this challenge information is published on the website, so you can go and refer back to it. We will be sharing detail in emails, so you'll have plenty of opportunity to reference what challenges are happening when, so that you know how to adjust your strategy accordingly. But a few details about the rules to keep in mind with this overall challenge. There is a detailed official rules document uh, available on the website, and I encourage everyone to take a look and read through that. There's lots of great information about uh, the how to participate, how to win, what challenges are available, and any rules that you need to keep in mind. Um, as Sue already mentioned, uh, there will be recipients in both Tier 1 and Tier 2. Um, the tiers will be uh, finalized based on uh, overall participation in the challenge, looking at the size of all the organizations that have applied to participate. Um, so you will be notified by email before the challenge begins based on your organization size, whether you fall into Tier 1 or Tier 2. So keep an eye out for that email that will be coming once the application uh, process is closed. Uh, so sole source donations, as I mentioned earlier, this is going to be donations to your campaign from a unique individual. So for those weeks that the challenge is about sole source donations, if you have a donor that makes 10 donations to your organization during that week, they will only count as one sole source donation because they're the same individual that has given multiple times. Uh, and another really important rule to keep in mind, um, proxy donations, so uh, your organization making donations on your own credit card uh, are not allowed. Um, of course, the, the goal of this challenge is to encourage nonprofits to uh, raise funds, activate their community, while also leverage some of the really exciting um, grants that are available from the Gannett Foundation and as a part of this Community Thrives Challenge. So keep the spirit of that challenge in mind when you're planning how to participate, how you are going to uh, plan your strategy to um, take advantage of and hopefully earn these grants. <clears throat> so a few reminders and announcements on some of the key things to know as a part of this campaign. So the first is the challenge website has tons of really great information available for you. So the toolkit that's available on this challenge website is going to have a recording of today's webinar, as well as a registration link for next week's webinar, in which we will dig a little bit deeper into strategy for the campaign. You'll also have the ability on this toolkit to access tips, FAQs, how-tos for the platform. We have templates for email and social media, logos, uh, et cetera, to uh, make it even easier to uh, build your campaign successfully. Key dates to remember, we have mentioned this before, but it bears repeating because it's really critical. The challenge, the fundraising challenge begins Monday, September 21st, 12 p.m. noon Eastern time, and it ends Friday, October 16th, 12 p.m. noon Eastern time. I just mentioned a minute ago, but our next webinar is going to be next Wednesday, September 9th, 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we will, as I mentioned, dig a little bit deeper into strategy on um, what your organization can do to really make the most of this campaign, digging a little bit deeper into uh, some prize strategy, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, matching grants, et cetera. And again, you can sign up on the nonprofit toolkit on the website. And throughout the challenge, from now through the end, the team here at Mighty Cause is here to help you with support. So uh, we have uh, helpcentersupport.mightycause.com. There's tons of articles and tools available here. Uh, we have video walkthroughs. We have articles that walk through step by step of how you can do specific things on your page. So make sure you check that out, support.mightycause.com. If you're not able to find what you're looking for there, or you just need to get some one-on-one -on -one help from our team, you can email support at mightycause.com 
or you can call us at 202-800-1618. Our team is available Monday to Friday, 9 to 5 p.m. Eastern time, and we are happy to help. And so with that, I am going to take a look and see if we've had any questions come in throughout uh, that uh, we'll go ahead and answer for the group. If you do have any questions, uh, you are welcome to um, post them in now. Hey, Bethany, can I just um, mention a couple of things? Of course. Sure. Hi, everyone. This is Sue Madden uh, with the Foundation uh, once again. And I just wanted to um, say thank you to, to, to Bethany. That um, Thank you for providing us with so much information um, on the fundraising aspects of A Community Thrives. I did just want to mention a couple of things on the programmatic side. Um, so we don't highlight here the, the other grant opportunities that are available through the program, but by participating in the crowdfunding piece of the program, um, should you meet your minimum fundraising uh, total, then you will be considered for both the national project grants. And if you operate or have operations or um, reside in a Gannett market, um, you will also be considered for a local a general operating grant, which is not um, necessarily based on the project. It is based on your mission and purpose. Um, so um, with the um, national um, project grants, I did want to mention that it is helpful um, if you highlight what your project is on your um, campaign page that Bethany was talking about, where you're just kind of talking about your mission and your purpose and sort of making the sale pitch um, about your organization or initiative. Um, so it's helpful um, for um, us internally if you highlight your project as well as your mission there um, and some organizations um, are not interested in competing for a national project grant which is also fine in which case you would obviously be highlighting in that area your mission and purpose um, to be looked at by um, our regional committees who will look at the local well, who will decide the local um, operating grants um, and I think that that in general um, was all on the programmatic side I wanted to touch on. Okay, great, thanks. And and um, that strategy is helpful even just from a fundraising perspective. Of course, I mentioned you have your story section on your profile where you can talk about your organization, but donors love specifics. <laughs> donors love to know what their funds are really gonna go to support. So um, sharing information about your project on the page while it sounds like it's a great um, tool for the uh, team at Gannett, uh, it's also helpful for donors in really getting a good solid understanding about what their money is going to be used for, um, how their donation will make an impact. So uh, definitely a good plan, uh, whether you're going for those national grants or not. All right, so um, we do have quite a few questions here. Um, I'm gonna go through some of the questions and if we do run out of time uh, to get through all of the questions, uh, we will follow up on email after. So um, go ahead and post any questions if you have them. And if we don't have a chance to get to your question um, today on the call, we will follow up afterwards uh, to get you your answer. Uh, first question, is there a fee to join Mighty Cause? The answer is no. Um, Mighty Cause is available as a year round platform, um, of course, as a part of this challenge as well, there's no fee to join. There is a subscription plan that we have available if nonprofits are interested, that's $99 a month, but you don't need to sign up for that plan to uh, participate and um, be a part of this challenge. <clears throat> okay, great next question. If you meet the requirements for either tier one or tier two, does that automatically guarantee a grant or will it only make you eligible to apply? Also, will all proceeds go to the organization? So I'll answer first uh, the second half of this question, and then Sue, I think you can answer the first half. Um, any amount of money that you raise on the platform as a part of the fundraising challenge will go to your organization, whether you meet your minimum or not. So um, any funds that you raise from donors on the platform will automatically always be going to your organization. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I was just going to restate the other half of the question was, if sure. you meet the requirement, does that guarantee a grant or only make you eligible to apply? 
Right. Um, there is no guarantee of a grant um, by meeting the uh, minimum. It is a threshold uh, entry point. Great. Thank you. How many applicants will be selected to participate? What criteria used to select applicants for participation? So um, I'll answer and then so you can chime in with anything I don't miss. So uh, applicants are uh, eligible to participate as long as they are a 501c3 in good standing with the IRS uh, and uh, specifically 509A3 organizations are not eligible to participate. Um, but aside from that, all interested organizations that meet those criteria are eligible to participate in the fundraising challenge and encouraged to apply and be approved. Um, and then, of course, you know, as, as Sue mentioned, the, the grant making uh, part of this is, is kind of the second layer. Uh, but all organizations that meet those uh, basic criteria are eligible to apply to participate um, and you'll be approved as long as you are uh, a 501c3 organization meeting those criteria. And then for um, the national project grants and for the local operating grants, um, we do have a um, scorecard available for you to view on in the rules document if you um, scroll down and read, I believe that it is under um, how grants are decided. Um, and so that will provide you some detailed information on that. In addition, we will um, also be looking at organizations that have, um, that service historically disadvantaged populations. Great, thank you. My next question is, where is the link to where we put our profile? Do we need to finish the application before we can do a profile page? Um, so uh, technically, an organization does have access to a profile on the Mighty Cause platform before you complete your application. But in terms of the flow of participation in this challenge, it definitely makes sense to finish the application first uh, so that you can be approved to officially participate and then build out your profile page. Um, the link to your profile will be found in your dashboard. So when you log back into the platform in the upper right corner of the platform, you'll see a um, little user profile icon. Um, clicking on that, you'll see a drop down menu that allows you to access your organization's dashboard. That dashboard uh, will uh, have a number of uh, items as we went through under fundraising you'll be able to access your organization profile the url that's at the top of that page when you're on your profile editing is the link that you'll share so it'll be something like a community thrives.mightycause.com slash organization slash the food bank for example um, you have the ability to customize the end of that URL, as I mentioned, in your settings, um, and you can grab it from the top of the page while you're on the profile making any edits. Um, next question is about support, contacting for technical support. You can contact support at mightycause.com. Uh, so again, you'll first want to make sure that you uh, complete the application profile. As a part of the application, you'll be granted access to your nonprofit's um, dashboard on the platform. If you haven't received your approval yet, then you may not have access to your organization's dashboard. Once you've been approved, uh, the person that registered or completed the application process should have access to that dashboard. But you can always contact support at mightycause.com if you're having uh, trouble finding where to um, grab, where to go to, to access your dashboard. Uh, next question, are reports generated in Excel for uploading to other CRM apps? Yes, um, all of your donations, report, disbursements, report, et cetera, uh, you can download them all as a CSV uh, and then you can easily manipulate them if you need to move the columns around, adjust the data a bit so that you can upload into your CRM system. Next question, do donors have the option to pay the fees for their online donation? Yes, uh, they do have the ability to cover the fees associated with their gift. There'll be a little checkbox that they see when making their donation, um, and that will allow them to cover the fees, and then 100% of their gift will come to your organization. Um, 
to get into a little bit more of the fees that are charged on the online donations. Uh, there's a 2% platform fee and then a 2.9% plus 30 cent credit card fee. And again, donors do have the option to uh, cover that. Uh, next question, is it possible to email this presentation to participants? Yes, uh, all uh, participants that are approved will, um, will receive an email tomorrow uh, with a link to access the presentation. Moving through, what are the budget sizes for tier one and tier two? Uh, this will be announced prior to the campaign at this point. Um, it's not 100% certain what that will be uh, because the goal is to try to split it as evenly as possible. So um, we need to wait until we have the full pool of applicants and then, um, and then the decision will be made. I'll just pop in here that um, the past two years, yeah, it's been um, greater than and less than $500,000 because we have so many organizations that applied who are on the small side. Great, thank you. And the next question uh, is also for you as well. If you happen to have this information, uh, how many applicants were there in each tier last year? Uh, that is a very good question. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, because I, as I mentioned previously, we divided it right in almost in half. So I'm going to go with approximately 750 on each side of that. Great, thank you. Um, next question is, is there a minimum or maximum amount per donor? Uh, there is a minimum donation on the platform. Uh, the minimum is $5 per donation, but there is no maximum amount per donor. Um, again, reading the rules will be helpful in terms of understanding any details in terms of being eligible for those grants. Uh, and any considerations there, but there's no maximum donation amount that a donor can make on the platform. Um, okay, if we have a database that records donations, how are those donations imported? If we're able to, if we're already able to process online donations, what's the benefit of using this platform? So um, that's a great question. A really uh, organizations need to use this platform for the crowdfunding aspect of this challenge in order to be eligible for uh, the overall ability to earn grants. Um, that's, you know, part of the challenge is uh, fundraising through this platform so that all the uh, donations and everything can be tracked together and there can be a leaderboard to show uh, the different participating organizations. So uh, even if you do have a donation page on your website, for example, uh, you do need to use this platform to uh, be eligible to participate in this uh, in this challenge. Okay. Next question. Um, the nonprofit that I work for is a national one uh, with regional areas of focus. Do nationally based nonprofits typically participate in the challenge? Is this a deterrent at all in receiving a project grant? Uh, so I'm going to uh, share that with you, Sue. Um, I don't think it's a deterrent, no. We had a couple winners last year. Um, and if you want to see who the winners were last year, you can go to act.usatoday.com um, that were um, uh, regional um, entities um, under the working under the umbrella of a larger national organization. Great. Uh, next question, a uh, very important one. Will donor information be protected and not used for other purposes? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there is a privacy policy uh, available uh, on the platform uh, that you can access uh, for further information, um, but your donor data is yours. Uh, Mighty Cause won't solicit those donors, will not sell uh, those um, that donor information. So you can have confidence in the um, the protection of your donor data. Um, question on, uh, can you provide more information about the merit-based grants that we'd become eligible for if we met the fundraising goal? Um, I'm not sure if this question was asked before you shared a little bit more information at the end of the training, um, Sue, on this, but I don't know if you feel there's anything else to add uh, besides what you've already shared. 
Um, no, I think I would reference um, the rules again, where it outlines um, in pretty uh, decent detail um, how what those grants are, what we're looking for, as well as how they will be scored. Um, the national project grants are will be decided at the corporate level. Um, with the um, the board of the foundation and myself, and then the local operating grants will be um, determined by local marketplace leaders. Great, thank you. And I see a couple of questions about, um, uh, can you share a little bit more about what is considered a community building project or what kinds of applications are considered community building? Um, sure, it's obviously a very broad um, category, um, and I should have had my definition right in front of me, which I do not, but generally community building projects um, from our perspective are initiatives um, that contribute to um, servicing and creating a sense of community um, where there has been none or less um, than what is desirable. All right. Um, I, we're running out of time here, and we do have a, a decent amount more questions. So I'll answer just one or two uh, more here, and then again, uh, we will follow up with everybody who has answered or who has asked questions. Um, let's see. Are videos desired for the website platform? Um, yes, videos are always a great way to tell a story. Uh, they're not a requirement, but it's always a great way to tell a story and you do have the ability to um, upload a video right onto your page. Um, next question, does the campaign allow for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising? Yes, this is definitely encouraged. It's a great way to raise more money uh, as a part of the challenge. Um, and so uh, we'll talk more at the next webinar on um, what you can do with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, some strategies to keep in mind, and how to take advantage of it on the platform. Um, so definitely tune into that next webinar, but we would certainly encourage you to um, take advantage of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising as a part of your, uh, your campaign. And um, with that, we are, I'm going to go ahead and, and cut us off because we're right here at an hour. Um, we do have lots of questions left, but we will make sure to uh, follow up with everyone uh, for all those questions that are about having access to the presentation and the recording. Yes, it will be available on the nonprofit toolkit on the Community Thrives website, uh, communitythrives.mightycause.com, uh, and there will be an email sent tomorrow for everyone that uh, has uh, registered for the webinar. Uh, and uh, is uh, proved to participate in the challenge. So uh, thanks again, everyone, for your time. Uh, we will follow up and answer the remainder of your questions. Um, and we look forward to seeing you all next week at our next webinar. Thanks so much, and thanks, Stu, for joining us. Thanks, Bethany.